Hey buddies, welcome to Mass Games. My name is Simon. Today I'm giving you a setup, play, and review for the game Dead Man's Chest. Those two games you just saw in front of me are basically the original versions, well, at least Perudo was, of Liar's Dice, and then the card game version of Lie. Well, Dead Man's Chest is a tiny game from Eagle Griffin Games that came out in 2015, and it's a game involving ultimately bluff, whereby you're trying to be the last person left with gems. Each player is going to start off with five gem pieces. And just whilst I'm getting those pieces out, please ensure you hit the like button, please share, and if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell to be informed when other videos come along, such as the dice distancing videos to see how far the dice for this particular game roll compared to other games. You can find a playlist for other games to see how far they roll in that playlist for dice distancing. Additionally, you can also find other videos such as how to set up, play, and review for this, and of course those other two games in question. This is a family weight game, so this will be going in the family weight playlist as well, as well as, it, well as the mass games playlist, etc. So as you can see, it's a very tiny portable game, a very small box, with a very light weight, around 57 grams. Everybody's going to take one of these cards. On the back of here, it's going to give you the rules on how to play the game. Let me explain the game for you. So you're going to have somebody start off for the first player. They're going to roll the dice, maybe decide who wants to be that person. They're going to pop the dice in here. They're going to shake this up and it's going to tell you something. For example, you always have the higher value, the skull represents a 1. The highest value is always on the left hand side, so luckily for right now that's fine. We have a score of 31. That happens to actually be, coincidentally, the lowest score in the game. Now what you're going to do is close the lid and give a value. You could say 31, in which case you pass it to the next person, and they happen to then say something higher if they want to stay in the game. So they say, right, I'm going to say 32. The person who started can say, I challenge you, I think it isn't 32, sorry, the third person, so the person to their left, will say, okay, well, I, I don't know what it is, so I'm going to say, let's say the next highest value, which is 41, so now they're saying 41, this person, of course, knows what the value is and says, sorry, I challenge you, they see it's not 41, it's a lower value, therefore this person will lose a gem. Now, what they could use instead is, let's say uh, we do it again, and this person will start. That's always happens. Now, of course, the value is 53. They could choose low and say, I don't know, let's say 31 again. This person, of course, can't see the value. They say, oh, I don't know, 32. They say 41. They know that's still in play, so then they might just say, well, skip it down to not say 42, 43. They say 51. They say 52, being very cagey. You come back and maybe you jump it up a bit more. Uh, but this case, you say 53, they go, oh, I don't know, I don't think it's gone that high. Look at it, it is 53, so now they lose a die, or they lose a gem, it's that person's turn again. So now they're going to roll, and this time they have a value of uh, 54. So this time, they say 54. Now, as you can see, that's kind of a middle value of all these different uh, rankings. This person goes, hmm, well, let's hope, uh, it might well be 54, but I'm just going to shake the dice, and need to ensure the value is higher than a 54. So you have a look at it, and right now it's not. It's a lower value. So they look at it, and they just have to call it either way and say, I don't know, 61. Maybe not saying, I don't know, they say 61. This person has a go. They go, mm, well, you know, it's uh, not necessarily 50 50, but getting quite close to the chances of being something else. I'll call them out. They have a look. The value actually is lower, so they were wrong, and they actually have to lose a gem. And currently, at the minute, well, based on this example, we're all four each. If they do, of course, equal that value, then, um, of course, it always needs to be higher to challenge to lose. So that's how the game goes. It's a very swift and easy to game to explain. Uh, my rating it is fun. It's, uh, I give it kind of a 6 out of 10. I think it's nice. Of course, it's only playing two dice. So um, I'm being a bit harsh in the sense that I like Lie so much. You might have seen how much I've given that game a rating. And, of course, the original classic game of Liar's Dice or Liar Dice called Perudo. I like how at smaller size it comes in, it's very nice. Um, I like the fact that it's literally just chucking two dice out and seeing can you go high with that value. Uh, quite mathematical, you can still forget what your things are. Uh, that is something to be aware of. And that skull, it is tricky to realise, is actually a value of one. So that has been the review for Dead Man's Chest. Hope you found that of interest. Uh, please let me know in the comments. And via the description, you can, of course, support the channel via well, you can see Instagram and follow there. But also what you can be doing is actually supporting via actually going onto Patreon, supporting the channel there, and of course following on Instagram. Well, thanks very much for watching. That has been the game, Dead Man's Chest.